So fractions, three main types of fractions or three types of fractions. We have proper fractions, improper fractions, and mixed numbers. So proper fractions, what are they? Well, proper fractions, they're always less than one. Their value is always less than one. So things like one half, five over eight, negative three over 10, they could be positive or negative, but they're always less than one or less than, or you know, between negative one and positive one, we could say that since we have the negative there. But look, proper fractions, always, always, always less than one because remember the denominator that represents the whole, the entirety. And so if you have three out of 10, well, you don't have the whole or you don't have one. You don't have one of that thing that you're talking about. So that's why proper fractions are always less than one because the numerator, the number up top, so numerator is less than the denominator. Your numerator is your part and your denominator is the whole. So having one out of two, well, you have half, not the whole thing. Five out of eight, again, you don't have the whole thing. Three out of 10, again, you don't have the whole thing. So that's why these values are less than one. Now, improper fractions, let's tackle those. Improper fractions, their values are greater than one. And that's because the part is greater than the whole, like five out of two. Five is certainly greater than two. And that would be about two and a half once we do the math there. 11 out of 10, that's a little over one. That'd be just about 1.1. And then we have negative 15 over nine. And that would be something just about negative 1.6 repeating. And again, you know, I've had the practice, so, and plus, you know, I created these slides, so I know those exact values, but with practice, you can look at any fraction, proper or improper or mixed, and you can generally get exactly, or generally know where that number might lie. Lastly, we have mixed numbers. Mixed numbers, they're a whole number followed by a fraction. So mixed numbers, uh, they're generally greater than one. They generally are. So we have mixed numbers, uh, one and three quarters, that's one point and three divided by four, that's 0. 0.75. So that's how we can represent that. Five and seven eighths, that would be five and, and then whatever seven out of eight is, that's gonna be something just about 875, 0.875. And then negative 10 and 19 over 29, that'd be the whole number, so negative 10, with a decimal, and then 19 over 29, whatever that may be. And if I had to assume that would be something close to 0.65. So this is an approximation. Don't quote me on that one, okay? But again, the point of me showing you this is that I don't want you to rely on a calculator so much as you can actually rely on your knowledge of reference points. So it's gonna take some practice, but we have to embrace that challenge. So again, just like I said, I'm gonna reiterate it here. Proper fractions, their value is always less than one. Improper fractions, their value is always greater than one. And mixed numbers, their value is based on the whole number and the fraction. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle some examples. Why not, right? So let's order the following fractions from least to greatest. We have one third, negative three quarters, negative two fifths, 10 over two, four and one half, and four over three. I'm gonna give myself a little more space to work with. That way we can tackle this nice and neatly. So let's start with one third. Well, we're gonna to need to know, like these basic ones, we're gonna to have to know, okay? We're gonna to have to know these basic ones. Anything divisible by, if you're dividing by two, three, four, or five, or 10, take note of that right now. You're gonna to need to know how to find those exact values. One third, if we didn't know already, that's about 0 0.3 repeating. And you can find out if, let's say you get stuck, you can find out by dividing three into one. And you can put decimals and everything just to help yourself out. Three can't go into one, but they can go into 10 three times. And so you'll subtract, well, nine, because three times three is nine. And then you have a one again, the zero drops, three into 10, well, that's three again. 
and you're going to keep subtracting 9 forever and ever and ever. And that's why it's 0 0.3 repeating. Up next, negative 3 quarters. It's in the name. 3 quarters. Well, what's the value of 3 quarters, like money? 75 cents. So that would be negative 75 cents. Negative 2 out of 5. Again, this is one of those times where we're going to need to know what that feels like. If you ever get stuck, here's a nice little strategy I like to use. If I split up a whole or a dollar into five parts, well, that's 20 cents a piece. And two 20 cents, that's 40 cents. So this right here would be negative 0 0.4 or negative 40 cents. 10 over 2. This is an improper fraction, and we can actually do the division. What's 10 divided by 2? 5. Makes our life just a little easier there. 4 and a half. Well, that would be 4 point. Well, what's half of a dollar? 50. And there we go. And then 4 over 3. Well, okay. We want to think about that one. Because it may not be so obvious to us, right? I know for a fact that this is greater than 1 because it's improper. But let's go ahead and change that into a mixed number. And this is where I'll show you that. So 4 over 3, and I'll go ahead and do this over here. 4 over 3, well, how many 3s can we put into 4? Well, we can take away one of those 3s and have one remaining. So I can write a 1 third. And if I take away 3 from that 4, well, that's a whole. Because remember, the denominator, your denominator represents the whole. So we have an entire thing there. We have a hole in there. And so we take it out, and we can represent that as one and one third. And it's a little easier to feel that as opposed to an improper fraction. So we have one and one third, which as we saw, one third is 0 0.3 repeating. But with the one in front, that will turn into 1.3 repeating. And there we go. So we've determined the values of all of these uh, fractions. And now we can order them from least to greatest. Quick little thing, remember, on our number line, on our number line, the more negative it is, the further left it is. So negative 10 comes before negative 5. Just want to reiterate that. That way we understand that negative 0 0.75 is actually less than negative 0 0.4 because it's more left on the number line. It's more left. So let's say we were actually drawing from 0 to 1. Let me go ahead and erase this over here. Instead of saying negative 10 to negative 5, let's say we're saying negative 1 to 0. Negative 0.75 would be right here, as opposed to negative 0 0.4 being somewhere over here. So negative 0 0.75 would come first. It would indeed come first. Next, then we would have that negative 0 0.4. Remember, all negative numbers come before positive ones if we look at this number line. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's up next. We've got those two. Well then up next, and I'll go ahead and represent these with their fractions actually. I'll use negative three quarters and negative two fifths. Up next, what we have going on is, let's see, we have that 0 0.3 repeating. And yeah, nothing's less than that, so I'll use one third. Then let's see, we have 1.3 repeating, 4.5 and 5. Okay, so 4 thirds is next. Next we'll have 4.5, which is 4.5. That is a 4, I promise. And then lastly, we have the 10 over 2, which was 5. And there we go. Now, of course, it seems a little easy when you, know, you have your instructor doing it here, but it can be easy for you too. You're going to have to go ahead and just put the time and effort in that it takes to practice. And in this boot camp, we'll go ahead and provide plenty of resources for you to practice with.